start off, um, this is a link to a PDF file that is going to show hopefully um, all of the apps that I'll, I'll share, share with you today. And so you'll have them in a list and it has the prices and a place to vote. And of course you're going, but I'm not printing. I use um, Remarks, I think is what it's called. This little app. Okay. So this will be the document. That's a PDF. And Remarks works really well. It's a little tab. And then you can type in your notes. So you can either use it as a um, digital notating device or you can look at it with your partner. But I use Remarks. It just works really well. And they on PDF. I know, I put it up there and took it off right away. I don't know, you guys are supposed to be speed readers. And so that's in my Dropbox, just so that, that you know. And last night as I was kind of working through um, this presentation, I'm going, an hour is not a lot of time, so I'm hoping to cover things. There may be a few things that I might skip over. My goal is not just to go through my slideshow, but to actually open up some of the apps and show you how they actually work, rather than just seeing a picture of the app. So we'll see how that goes on our time and give everyone a chance. And this chair is going to drive me crazy. So it's bit.ly slash capital T 5GBE capital A. Did everyone get a number? We're kind of almost done. And I'll try and start right at four. So hopefully we'll be done at five. Four, five. One thing about the, a large room like this, I always feel like I kind of ignore people on the side, so I'll try not to. It looks like most of you have gotten there. I'll put this back up at the end for people that might like to have that document. But I'm going to go ahead and get started because I know this is the session before dinner and everybody wants to get to the dinner line early. And I also know it's the end of your day. And if you're like me, I've sat through two sessions and it's like my brain is already full. So I know how it is. So um, just so you know, this is the single iPad classroom um, presentation. And so this is geared towards those of you that are like me, that maybe your school doesn't have a one-to-one -one iPad program, or you might not have a lot of iPads in your classroom. You have your own personal iPad, and you think to yourself, you know, there is got to be a great way that I can use this in the classroom. Or you may actually have an iPad that's been given to you by your school. I know there are some schools that they give them to the teachers first. 
So hopefully this will give you just some ideas on how to use your iPad to make your teaching life a little bit easier. One of the main things that worked for me that I should start with is once I learned that I could project my iPad, that opened up the realm of possibilities. I have an iPad 1 from day one, and it didn't have a camera. You couldn't project anything off of it. So basically, it was my personal iPad, and I did not really use it in my classroom. So if you have your own iPad, I suggest getting a dongle, being able to project it, and get an audio as well. You don't have to, but it does make it a lot, lot more easy. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Sarah Brooks. I teach up in Greeley, Colorado. I am at one of the larger elementary schools, Centennial. We are a K through five school. We are predominantly low income, um, high English language learners. We have about 15% refugee population. I've been there, I'm starting my eighth year. I've been teaching for about 28 years. It's been so long, I don't know, 27, 28, somewhere in there. About the last 12, 13 years has been mostly in technology. I have my master's degree in information and learning technologies from CU Denver. So that's just a little bit about me. I generally like gadgets. So we're going to kind of start with looking at management apps. I think when you have one iPad, that is usually a really great way to use it in your classroom to make life a little bit easier. Now, most of these apps, I do not use them each and every day with each and every class. I teach all grade levels each day. So I see kinder through fifth grade each day, and I see them once a week. I generally use most of my management apps more often at the beginning of the year or sometimes when I think, you know, these students need a little bit of reinforcement. <coughs> However, there is one that I do use each and every day, and that is Smart Seat. And this is a seating chart program, but it also does a lot more. So let me kind of show you a little bit about it. See if I can find it here. I tried to get everything set up nicely. So here is my little model classroom. And go right there. So one of the things that you can do is you can set up your seating chart by setting up your desk. And they do that in a grid. And they're very good about telling you how to do that. And then you can put your students' names in under a roster. And you can also include photographs. The nice thing I like about this, I teach like 600 and some odd kids a week. I can put my seating chart up and take the names off and try and remember my students' names by their faces. It also helps me call them by name a whole lot easier. So this is my little sample class. So you can do attendance, of course. So when you click on your attendance, I always start with all present with this. I used to think by just tapping the absences, the other kids would be marked present. It doesn't work that way. So I would mark my kids all present. Their names are all green. And then if Ollie is absent, I tap him. His name turns to red. So this is really nice in my case because I don't do a daily attendance like most teachers do. I see my kids once a week. So one thing that's really helpful for me is I can look at the attendance for a kid and go, well, no wonder they're behind. They've missed the last three weeks of computers. So it really helps me know that the student's behind because they've missed time. Other things that you can do, I'm going to say done. I'm going to show you under the more. You can change your layout. This is your roster. Um, chart options, you can print these out as a PDF. You can print it out with the pictures, which is nice for substitutes. You can create groups. So you can decide how many groups you want to do to, like, like so, and create your groups. Little tab for me. I guess I'm done. Click on done, which would be helpful. For some reason, I'm thinking it's going to go back to the screen. And you'll notice that each of the groups now is highlighted in a different color. So a nice random way to do your groups. You may also, on individual students, we will pick on Snickers today. You also have a place that you can put notes. And this is another thing that I love about this app. Um, I can click on notes, put in any information. For example, sometimes I have students that I think maybe they go to the bathroom a lot. So I start documenting. They ask to go to the bathroom this week, this week, this week. And I look to see, is there a health issue why they're doing it? Or is it that they're just going to the bathroom a lot? 
I put notes sometimes for students for IEPs, things that pertain to my computer lab class. I put um, behavior issues that I notice, um, things that maybe a student needs to work on, just those kinds of things. You may also email these out. So you can email out to the parents the notes that you have and their attendance as well. So that's a really nice feature. So done. As you can see, I have my attendance, the present, tardy, and excused. I go to details. It shows the days that they were here, days that they were absent. Another thing that I really like is the random choosing of students. I have my, stu my computer lab, I have 30 some kids in there. I need someone to turn off the lights. What happens if I say, okay, who's gonna turn off the lights? They all raise their hand, I have to look around and say, okay, you go turn off the lights. It takes up time. So now I just do my little random student and because I've already done attendance, it knows who's here and who isn't. And then I just say, next, Tree, could you turn off the lights, please? So it's just a really nice tool. I use this all the time. I'm trying to think of what else would be a really important thing to show you. There's our the roster when you put your names in. Oh, the emojis. This is also a real handy thing. Let me see if I can. I don't think this will let me spread out. But you can also use emojis on the, the nicknames. And I use that a lot to kind of cue in for students. So for example, we did keyboarding this year. And my students, I expected them to get through lesson 20 to call it done. So when they would finish, rather than going, okay, are you done? Have you finished lesson 20? I would mark next to their name. They had a little picture of a keyboard from the emoji, so I knew they were done. Okay, you're going to be on the block today. You're finished. So it really helps. So you just use the emojis to figure out your, you know, your different cues. So I have that phase a cat. And Carrie's got a bus because maybe she's a bus, bus student. So you can use those to help you organize your classroom. So this is Smart Seat. I think it's three ninety nine, worth every penny of it. Any questions about Smart Seat? This is new for me using my iPad to present. I'm more used to my laptop. Noise controllers. This has been very helpful for me to teach students what is an appropriate noise level in the classroom. I find when I tell kids, you can work, but you can talk quietly. What they perceive as working and talking quietly is very different from what I perceive. So it's very difficult for them to learn what that sounds like. And so what I have found is by using, um, this one is called Silent Light. With my older students, it helps them to know what an appropriate noise level is. In fact, it's very funny that I'll have students sometimes, as the noise level builds up, will say, can you put up the noise app? because that helps us keep our noise level down. This one, um, you can put in your goal, whatever you're working on. So I'm gonna open it up really quick here. I have them all nicely in order. And this one, since it's doing vertical, it's not showing the, turn it this way, see if it'll swap. I don't think it's going to want to. And see, it doesn't like me because I'm too noisy because I'm too close. So you can pause it. And you can set it so that students earn stars. I don't necessarily give a reward for stars, but they like to set a goal. OK, last time we got five stars because we were quiet the whole time. And you can adjust this for different kinds of noise levels. So like if the kids are working in groups, and I want them to learn that we're not yelling so loud that the roof of the computer lab is coming down, I can set it for a, a louder noise level. So when you go to your settings here, you can do your points. This is where you set your sensitivity. And again, you can start it and pause it. But this one is really nice for older students. I really like the, the silent light. Remember, since I did that one, it's there. Younger kids, they kind of like too noisy. If too noisy is going to come up, I think. Now it's on. 
So this one's very visual, and the kids really like it because they can watch the gauge go. Um, they can do the same thing. You can set it so that they can earn stars as long as they're working quietly. This one also has a sound effect that you can set. So if it gets really loud, a siren can go off or glass can break. I usually turn that off because once that happens, that usually gets the kids very excited. And then they want to get the siren to go off and the glass to break. But usually just the visual works really well. And just like the silent light. I think if I pause it, there we go. You can set your sensitivity as well. The dampening kind of eliminates some of the background noise. You set your star awards here, how many you want, how long do they have to be quiet. So it gives you a lot of different options. And again, I do not use these every single day. I might use them a lot at the beginning of the year or I might use them at a time, like when we're starting keyboarding, most students need it to be quiet. We use the, the Too Noisy app or the Silent Light pretty much regularly until they kind of got it down, and then I kind of leave it off. So that one's too noisy. And they do have a free version of that. I think on the free version you just have less, um, you can't modify it as much. It's pretty. Set. Now this one I was going to use during my presentation, then I thought, oh, I don't know that I actually would be able to do it. But this is really nice, it's called 3030. And it is great to use when you are on a tight schedule and you really want kids to learn too, like you've got five minutes to um, do your rough, your rough draft and then you've got ten minutes to work on this, whatever your goals are in your class. You want your kids to move through things quickly, or if you're like me, to keep you on track. So you set all of your different um, sections, and then when you run it through, it'll start keeping time. And then even if you go into other apps, move out of it, it will still work in the background. And it's actually fairly easy to use. If I can go back. So these are my classes that I have set up. And again, I do not run this every single time I do class. I just kind of run it until we kind of get our routine down. But this one's called 3030, and it's really, it's nice. It's got a great um, help menu. So since I don't set up my times all the time, I always have to go to the help menu to remember, how do I set up a new class? But it is great. Lost my keynote. Ah, oh, that's why. Thank you. Now I don't think it even likes to play with me. Maybe I was playing. That's my too noisy. There we go. I just did that one. Decide now. We're actually going to get a chance to use this one. But decide now is really fun. It's a wheel, and you can customize your wheel. You can put anything you want on it, and then you can spin the wheel. So you can give your wheel a different name, the different things that you put in it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see, by our wheel number, who is going to win our door prize today. So I'm going to close that out really quick. This is what happens when you try to be prepared. This will be so easy. I can just flip through these. So just before I start on, oh, actually, let me go back. I was going to use the wheel for the door prize. We're not. Hold on, but we will. Uh, we're just going to use this to so that at, at your tables you can do a little conversation just so we, we can show you how this works. And I know up there it's a little small to see, but I'll read it to you. So you just tap it. So at your table, just tell each other what district you're from. Probably most of you know each other. <laughs> I 
So I'll kind of show you how this works. Future is always good. We give you guys a chance to talk, and you're worse than the kids. But when you go to the settings, this is where you set your wheels. It comes with default ones like date night and all these things that probably we're not going to want to use. I can just see it, you know, in junior high. But um, you just add your new wheel, give it a name, choose your different color schemes. I think it's going to make me give it a name. There you go. <laughs> and then you add your labels. <coughs> Just like this, it's pretty easy. Can you change how many colors there? Yes. The the different let's see, I'll go to adding a new one. So there's the rainbow one. Let me see if it's gonna shift before it goes I think you just kinda of have to pick them. Oh, I thought I was doing the same. That's like two labels. And I, don't, I believe you can probably change the colors if you just go to edit. I just haven't changed the colors before. Yes, you can. So if you decide you don't like that one, you can change it. But this is a lot of fun for all those different things where you do have some choices. I, I always think about inside recess, brain breaks, maybe writing topics, all different ways that you can use it. And you can just customize it to your heart's content. But this is a really nice one. Decide now is a fun one. I haven't got a chance to use it too much. It's one I kind of discovered at the end of the year. So it, just remember, it's got those edible choices. You can make your own wheels and various color schemes. Stick pick, this is another kind of a fun one for randomly choosing students. I don't use it for that particular purpose just because I don't want to set in my 600 and some odd student names. But I'll kind of show it to you and so that you can see some things that you can do with it. And I'll show you how I use it. A little different. One thing I'm very proud of, my son has not texted me during all of this. It's usually about in the middle of something. He comes up with something. When are you coming home or something like that? Okay, stick picks. One of the things that I did is I did mine with brain breaks here. <coughs> so my sticks. So if I was going to do brain breaks in my classroom, so then I got elbow to knee five times. And then I can just mark it as used, go to another one, same thing. Now you can also, I'm going to switch classes here. Go to my sticks. So you can set up for your individual students um, different question stems, and they give you all sorts of choices. So for example, these are Bloom's revised question stems, so I could say, what is an iPad? So if there's answers to the question, I can assess that student. I can say they were correct, incorrect, or they were just giving their opinion. Um, and then I can mark it used and not call that student again. And so how they do that, see if I can show you. So for example, this student, I could set them that they're on the Bloom's Revised on creating that level. Just kind of step in. So Snickers is in on Bloom's Revised Remembering. Snickers does better when she's got a treat. And then I could have Michelle with ESL beginning. So her, all three would have different question stems. So that is one way that you can use those stick picks. I guess for me, the one thing is that might take a little bit of time on the front end setting it up. But especially if you're working with a small group, it might work really well. Or you can do like I did. I just set up my class. And instead of putting names, I put in a little brain break. Short, though. It does have to be short. 
be an image blog. But stick pics is pretty cool. Now, what my next one's going to be. Random name picker. This is where we're going to decide who gets the four prize. This one's my numbers, one through 30. This one is really good more for um, younger students in particular, because it's kind of fun. And you have different um, groups that you can do. So there's letters A to Z, the numbers 1 to 30, and you can put in a class with a list. I like the numbers myself, because I can use this with all my classes and not have to worry about inputting 700 names. So I'm going to do the popcorn one, because that one's the most fun. I Our popcorn pops. And our number there is three. Who has number three? All right. So on the back of number three, write your email address. And later, I'll tell you what your door prize is when we cover it. But that one's kind of fun. Really good for younger students. Thank you for your patience with me doing this on the iPad. And I feel bad because I'm not looking up as much. Now, one of the things I did is I had some of my numbers with two. I was kind of hoping I'd have two people, two people with number three, because then we could do pick finger. This one is really great for those opportunities in the classroom when two students are maybe having a disagreement. I was first. No, I was. I was. And you know, sometimes we just send them to the end of the line. You could also do the pick finger. Actually, you can have up to five people. So you could even go up to a small group and say, um, find out who's going to be the manager of your group. All of them put their fingers on, and they find out who's going to be the leader. So I, I want, can I get two volunteers? They'll come and put their fingers on the iPad. Come up. <laughs> can I get one more? One more? Just so we can see it. Oh, we'll do three. That's even better. So you could do it a couple of different ways. Like you could say the red person is out, and you keep choosing from that. Or you could say the red person is the chosen one. So go ahead and put your fingers on. And then, so then, like, either you would be out or you would be the person. And the kids kind of like this. And so, da -da -da, you would be the winner. So, pick finger is just kind of a fun way for those opportunities where you don't want to necessarily choose someone, it's a little more random. But, pick finger is kind of a problem solving tool there. Order here. Most of you probably know Class Dojo. How many do not know Class Dojo? Okay, a few people. Class Dojo is a way to give students points, positive and negative. I do mine a little bit differently because I do so many students. I do mine by classes. And so what's kind of cool about Class Dojo is you can give both, you can decide what you're giving points for. So what are the behaviors you're looking at? What are the behaviors that maybe students need to work on? So I, I do four positive behaviors, and I think three negatives. And so when you go to your class, oh, here I got this nice wonder, got some points at the end of the year. Tap on her. So if the class is achieving, I can give them points. Somebody is not prepared, they lose a point. And one thing that's important, if you're going to use Class Dojo, it is important to have some sort of way that they lose points if you're looking at percentage. Because at first I thought, I'm just going to give them points when they have positives. And then I'd look at the end, and everybody had 100%. So I couldn't really kind of choose which, which of my classes was the best behaved. The other thing that you can do with Class Dojo is have email to the parent. So if the parent wants to know how their child is doing, you can email their behavior reports to the parents. From what I understand, a lot of kids like that. You can also do the choosing of students. You can randomly select. You can give everyone a point all together. Um, trying to think what else that's kind of important. Kids can set up their own avatars. You can do this on the computer as well as on the iPad or your phone. Um, 
I'll look at the reports here so you can see what it's like. So, see, like I she showed an Icelanders class that was there. They were 75% positive behaved, or positive points is what I call it. But it's it's very motivating. I think the kids like it. Anyone have anything to add with Class Dojo that uses it more as a classroom? Did you say you can mail it home to parents? You can, and they sign up for it. And I know our first grade teachers do that. The parents really enjoy it. And something I was thinking about as a specialist is I might like to do some individual students. You know how you have those kids that are on behavior plans? And a lot of times I kind of forget. So I was thinking if I had individual students on there, I could probably track, put on their what. That's what I was going to say. I created an extra class for my behavior issue kids. And we created individual look fours one on one with those kids. Um, based on the goals that they were trying to mm -hmm. achieve. And then not only did that get emailed to their parent, but it also got emailed to the class um, or the school um, support team as well. So they can get awesome. the We can track percentage wise and behavior wise the progress. See, that's what I was thinking. I thought that'd be great if you could send it to their, their case manager nice. or whoever's yes. working with them. So that, I think that's a real nice advantage. And I think another thing that people have done with Class Dojo is not even just behaviors, but you can put in your objectives, where they're at. So they've accomplished this, 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 and they're still working on these. So people have used that and said, OK, they're 80% they, they're towards knowing their alphabet or whatever. You can do a lot of customization. So it doesn't necessarily just have to be behavior. But like I said, the kids really like it. And that little ding. They don't even have to know, you know, they just hear it and they're just off. And with my case, since it's usually the whole class, they're excited. Now, one thing I will say, I would be careful about projecting it. I know a lot of teachers do, but I always kind of go back to child privacy. And if students go home and they say, Joey is always getting negative class dojo points, you might have an issue. So I think doing it more privately on your own device. You can set it up so like if you give them negative points, it does not make noise or it doesn't right. set it up, but it only does just the positives. Right. And that's so that way they're just seeing the positive, they don't see the negative. Right. And so that's another good way to do it. And of course, sometimes if it's just the sound and they don't know who's getting, you know, they just kind of hear somebody got dinged, everybody might straighten up and go, oh, I'm off task. So I think it is real motivating, but do be careful just about that privacy issue, since I do mine whole class. And just so you know the way, I don't know if there's any other specialist in here, but how I do my whole class is I don't necessarily stand there and go, OK, all 28 kids, achieving, 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 achieving. If everyone's working, I'll give them five points, five achieving points. But then if I walk over and you're on YouTube looking at something and you're off task, I mark an off task. And so like I tell the kids, I said, so you're your off tasks or your negative points count more than even the positive. But again, I might do five points, but boy, they're still staying on task. I'll give them a bonus point. So I make it manageable for me, or else all I would be doing is this on Class Dojo. So just so you know, I don't try to stay married to it. But I really like Class Dojo. This one's a little bit different. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to include this one in management, but boy, this has been just a, a cool little tool, and it's getting better all the time. But it is Level It, and there's a lot of other um, book leveling apps out there. And generally, I will tell you the truth. I usually use it on my phone. It's a little bit more convenient. But right now, with Common Core, I know a lot of things are looking at as Lexiles. And so what this should do for you most of the time is if you scan the ISBN number, it will give you the grade level Lexile and all of that data. Now, it's only as good as the database. I will tell you that. So a lot of times, if it doesn't scan on the um, barcode, put in the title, if you know it's a popular title, and it will work. So I had to kind of work through some books here to find one that would work. So this is my son's Harry Potter. It came from Scholastic. It was really funny. The Scholastic barcode wouldn't scan. And I even used the Scholastic. They have an app as well, didn't scan. But inside, I found another barcode. So I'll kind of show this how it works. We'll see how it works on the iPad. Hopefully, we'll stay connected. What did you say it was called? It is, um, it should be on the list. Is it on my list? Well, 
We'll see if I can get this to go, and then I'll look for my paper. So it took a little bit. You do need some good lighting, so it did read it. And I can add it to my library. You can actually even use these to check out books in your classroom as well, you know, so if you have a classroom library. Um, there are also, you know, you can submit the level, so if it doesn't have it, you can recommend it. This one just has a lot of different things. What is the name of this app? Um, book Leveler. Book Leveler? Is it working with left side here? You know, they put whatever they know. So again, it is only as good as the database. There's another one. I'll give you the name of it. It's a little bit different than this one. Let me see if I can open it up really quick here. I have it on my phone and not on my iPad, so in some ways it's convenient. I'm a librarian, so this has really been nice to have. OK. Um, there's one that's also called Reading Leveler, and it has a little boy reading an orange book, because I know sometimes seeing the, the icon is good. Actually, this is called Level It. Sorry, not Book Level. Level It. But Reading Leveler, if there's a book that is not in any of these leveling apps, you can either speak in, which I kind of love. You do the speak in. You say your periods and commas. Or you can type in a section of text, and it will give you the Lexile. Or you know, the approximate Lexile. So that's really nice. But it's called Reading Leveler. But a little bit different kind of management act here. And try and get through these. Like I said, this is, there's so much to do in an hour. So I may pick and choose here. So I'm going to move into assessment. Notice I'm not even going back to my keynote point. That's, that's wasting a lot of time here. So the, the other thing about, um, I think, having a single iPad is assessment. And sometimes it can be one of the things you don't think you can do because all of your kids do not have a device. When you go through this one? This one. Okay. This one is kind of fun. You have to have an Evernote account, but it's called Evernote Peak. And you could do this a couple of different ways. You could do it as like students coming in the door, just kind of quizzing them as they're leaving as an exit, or I think you can do it just like that. So, so there, oh, it shows everything when you're displayed. I was afraid of that. <laughs> How this works if I was unconnected here, I was thinking about, you know what, I bet I can do it on the virtual. Let me try that. If it'll let me. Set Virtual cover. There, we'll try it this way because it'll probably give you a better idea. Why is it telling me still to close my smartphone? I don't think the virtual cover is going to work. Or maybe I need to catch it. But anyway. I'll undo this for just a second and get it so I can kind of show you a little bit. Okay. Evernote first. And what you do is you um, put it in a notebook. And then you open up the notebook. You add it here. So like I would go to add. And then it would download my notebook, and then I add it to Evernote. And the way that you make it for Peak is the title of your note is your question, and then the text is the answer. Now, if you update your notebook in Evernote, it doesn't automatically update in Peak. What you have to do is um, re-download. That's one thing I learned. So these are some they have in there as examples. But then you just go to My Notebooks. And like I said, you'd have to have it set up correctly. So a lot of my notebooks would not work for Peak. I just do it specifically for that. Let me get it really quick. So the way it works, and you do have to have a little smart. You close it. You open it. 
And so my question at the bottom, it says, are you excited for the class? And so students would either say yes or no, and then you lift it up, the correct answer is yes. Okay. My smart thing wants to go. Who was the founder of Apple? That's my question, and that would be the title in my notebook. And then um, the answer is Steve Jobs. People have also used these for language, so you could say a word in you know whatever language, and they hear it, and then they have to repeat it. So there's a lot of different ways that people have used peak, but it's just a fun one. And I like to use it sometimes as that um, opening as the kids are coming in, just a whole quick couple of questions. It's really nice at the beginning of the year, who's, the, who's our principal, um, what's my name, those kinds of things, because sometimes the, the kids are new to our school and they don't know those things. Now my other favorite one, and I'm going to pick on a couple of volunteers here, to do for assessment, and the kids have really liked this. In fact, I've been very surprised. Does it work as well being um, projected because you would not project this because it's already going to show you our correct answer. So on um, the iPad, I'm going to see the correct answers and I will also see what the, the students are seeing. Now what I do with this, I'm, I need to backtrack a little bit. This is Plickers, probably would help for you guys to know that. And Clickers uses barcodes, and the way I use this with my students is I put the question and the multiple choice answers up on the Promethean board, and so that's projected using my computer. Then I have it on my iPad, and then Clickers, you can get these cards. Um, I think that you can order them through Amazon, or you can email the company, and they'll tell you, and they already have them pre-made, or you can print out your own. The one thing I suggest doing is putting on the back which way is A, B, C, and D because all the barcodes are different. So even with clickers, this is not necessarily A at the top. In this particular case, it is. And so when the students hold these up, they're going to hold it with their answer at the top. And believe it or not, it scans them. The thing that you have to teach your kids is they don't do this. You can't wave them around. And they got to kind of stagger themselves. So in my computer lab, my kids are pretty much in rows, so they kind of hold them like this. So, you guys going to be my first people. I'm going to give you a The part of me is will be three. You can take share the question. Thank you. And hopefully I'll be able to scan you and still t stay attached. So what I do now, Make sure my camera is not covered. Get to my scanning. Okay, so I've got my three answers. And you can see all three answer B. <coughs> so I can pause. So it shows me number two had B. I can go through number 39 had B and 40. And then this goes on the website as well, so you can keep it to um, document some data. And the kids really like this. And you get 40 cards. You can use them over, you know, in different classes. So each card can be used by multiple kids. But this is clickers, and like I said, my kids really like it. Um, through them, or they have them as PDFs. I was going to bring the ones that I actually made, but I just printed them out on six by nine inch cards and cut them out. And then I made um, just a, a label on the back and have my ABCD, and then I sat there and put them on the back. No, I added that. That was, I think I got clickers very early on. It was a pretty new app. And so that was one of the things I suggested. So like this one, you can see the A is at the bottom if you're holding the clickers. This one, it's at the top. And so that really helps the kids because they they need to see it. But they really liked it. It's a real nice, easy way. And I have um, expressions with my Promethean board. But you know what? To, for the kids to get those out, turn them on, put in their answers. It takes a long time. This, they hold it up. I scan it. 
I've done it as a kind of a Likert scale with keyboarding. How many of you are, if you're feeling real comfortable with keyboarding, it's a four. If you're still hunting and pecking, do a one. I use that. It doesn't have to be multiple choice. So true and false, yes or no, those kinds of things. But clickers, I think, is a really great one. If you just have your own iPad, it's a great one. And another one that I haven't had a chance to use very much with my students, I've been playing around with it more at the end of the year, is um, Quick Key. And this one is using your, um, it is filling in the bubbles. And it's the same thing, that if you don't have a way for the kids to see the questions and the answers, you're going to be lost. So you could either project it up separately, or if you're using a quiz that you've already made, they can have the paper copy there and go through their bubbling. Now what I do, because one of the reasons I like my iPad is I try to stay more paperless. So the way I set up my quick key is I set up my class list and I just did um, Eagle was every student's first name and 30 or a number was their last name. This way I can reuse it with all 600 kids. I don't have to worry about names. When you make your class list, your roster, you're also going to get a little four digit code. So I put the labels on each of these cards that I printed out and then I filled in their code and then I had these laminated. So then my students just use a, a dry erase marker to fill in the answers on their, their quiz. And then, again, you scan it. just comes as a Scantron. So I'm going to go through and kind of model this one a little bit. And I think we'll, we will see our little answers. I'm gonna pick. Since I don't get to talk to you. And then when you're done, you can bring them up here. But you can also set up your quizzes and your class list on your computer. You don't have to do those on the apps, and that's true with clickers as well. So clickers, you can set everything up on your desktop or your laptop rather than on the app and then use the app to actually do the, to do the assessment. And the same thing with QuickKey, you can do it on the computer as well. And I think that's a little bit easier. But this is also kind of good practice for kids when they do have to bubble in. Unfortunately, we're still at that point in our academics that they still do need to bubble in answers. So then you just take it. And generally, they scan pretty easy. I don't want to turn it. I do not know why my iPad does not want to turn it. I don't know, it might not like me because I think it wants to turn. <laughs> it's easier when you do this at home, right? Well, it doesn't, oh, we'll just dismiss you. It is not wanting to turn for me to get my own goal. I don't know. So I'm just going to skip that. But generally, it does work really well. If I have a chance at the end, I'll come back to it. So we'll save it. But I don't want to have you guys sit there and watch me twisting and turning this. So those are kind of some assessment apps. The instructional apps, the ones that I use the most, and I use a lot of them, but one of my favorites is Newsomatic. Has anyone here used Newsomatic? This is just wonderful. It is an online um, newspaper that is written just for kids. It is a five day a week publication. And it varies in price. You can either do it monthly, or I believe I got mine for $9.99 a year, but I think it's like $19.99 most of the time. I'm going to come on this side so I can see better. And my students really like this. So there's a lot of different things that they include. Um, we'll just go 
protecting the flying squirrel. Here comes the article. Anything that's in blue and underlined, those are vocabulary words that kids might need. Climate change. So it'll read the word and then tell you what it means. And I know you guys can't really hear this, but... Protect the flying squirrel. Animal experts try to save the home of the flying squirrel. There is a type of flying So it'll go through and read that for you. Small area in Often, there's video available and pictures. This particular article doesn't look like it has extra, but you can get different facts. This is one of my favorites. Also, you can go there. We'll see how good our wireless is. But this is always fun when um, students are, you know, when you're reading something in another country, so you can see where the story is taking place in the San Bernardino Mountains. Can you get a subscription to this? Can you get into that? I believe each subscription allows like five devices at a time. But what I do, you know, I just project it. It works pretty well because most of the time it's just me. I have the right one here if I can zoom it. So are all those um, things at the bottom, is that how far it is from our current location? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if it really got me because I'm, I'm not really seeing our little marker. Usually it shows. So I don't know how great our wireless is right here, but it looks actually pretty close because it says 12 hours and 51 minutes. That sounds about right to San Bernardino. And then this is also fun if it's another country. How do they say hello? Maybe, maybe not. Hello. There we go. Sounds kind of like English. But it is really a lot of fun, and they always have great stories. And it's very child-friendly. Um, they can send questions and things, I believe. But it's very protected. You know, um, they usually do about four or five stories. So, like, here's an, um, another one. I was looking to see if this one had a, a video. I don't know. Maybe they're short on videos today. Usually, too, you can. So, you get one every day? Mm hmm. So, here's today's. And usually, you can get like the weeks just by. Going through. So that's perfect for your nonfiction. Exactly. Is it grade level or is this like? It's, this one they one do, one? I believe each day they kind of tell you what the, the grade level is, but it's kind of really geared, I would say, at elementary to probably middle school, very possibly. Um, I do ours a lot with just having the computer read it aloud to the kids rather than even them listen to me. The, the voice that they use is very natural, and I, the students kind of like it that way. But yeah, there's just a lot of different things. I want to see, oh, here's one. So here's a real jobs astronomer. And let's see if we can get the video to pull up. And that's always, you know, the kids always like the multimedia. My name is Colette Salek, and I'm an astronomer at the National Optical Astronomy Observatory. And I thought I would start this introduction just in front of this poster here. So you can see the Kitt Peak National Observatory and some of the off. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that one because I know I'm starting to run out of time. I haven't near got through everything I wanted to share with you. One hour presentations are terrible. They go so fast. And I always bite off more than I can chew because I always think, oh, this is good, this is good, this is good. Um, this is what um, I think I'm going to, I'll do this one really quick and then we'll do what, um, what our door price. This is called My Body and by Tiny Bob. And they also have one that just came out with plants. And what I like about this is fifth grade in science, they do body systems. And so I knew on the science CMAS they were going to have a lot of body systems questions. And I also know digital literacy is a, a big piece of that CMAS. And our students, you know, they watch videos all the time. They don't necessarily watch academic videos. And so they don't really know how to do that. They don't know how to write it up. So that was one of my big purposes for this particular app, was to use it with my fifth grade. And every time when we use this for them to have a prompt, they always go, can we get that on our iPads? Because our school does have some. So I just set up my little school person, my little centennial. 
And so this has all the body parts, but I can take away things. So there's my lungs. I can zoom in. I can slide. Same the inside. This is always fun. Then you can tap on the foot. What happens is we start running faster. You can turn labels on. Hopefully I'm going to stay in English. <laughs> I've had it before. I've switched to French. There's multiple languages. So you can do that as well. Get rid of that. And so a lot of times what I've done as a prompt is I put a, the heart and I said describe what you're seeing in the heart video. And so then they'd have to describe the parts, the process that was going on or describe what, what you're seeing here. But it's just a great app. Um, the, the private parts section, um, you get that as an in-app pur purchase. So if you're kind of leery about that, going, oh my gosh, I have like second graders. So I don't know that I want to get into that part. It's not included in the basic app. It does have the digestive system, though, and that's always fun. The kids always like to kind of see the carding and all that kind of stuff. It is. It's a fun app. There's just, like I said, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. If I can bring, show you the heart real quick if I can get there. There it is. There's my heart. Take away my labels. Does it bother me? So I can pull that in. Make it really nice and big. Do the running. You can even come into the, the veins here. So it's just really a nice visual. Great for them to do that. I'm going to do, I think, one more, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about this. I was going to demonstrate it, but I know I'm not going to have time. But I want to at least tell you about it. One of my other favorite things that I use a lot is write about this. And this is made to be used in classrooms. It's also a great, um, if you have one iPad, for example, and it's your class iPad, you can um, Set up more than one writer's profile if it's going to open. I don't know whether it's. So I usually turn off the music. I really like it, but music to me, sometimes my fifth graders might think it's a little babyish, but they actually like this a lot. So I use a lot of where I create my own prompts. So you can take your own picture, get it from your photo album, write in your um, prompt. You can record so you can make an audio if you would like, and then save it to your category. To go here to the home. When I go to categories, they give you some that they've already done. And there's, if I pick a picture, what's kind of cool is you can listen to it. Of course, it's not loud enough for you guys to hear. But you can go to the settings and you can change the level of the prompt. So at prompt level two, make up the rules for a game to play with a group of friends in this ball pit. Three, you jumped into the ball pit expecting to land on the bottom, but you kept going down. Write a fantasy about the crazy world you ended up in. So a lot of, they do that in their end. When you do a custom prompt, you can't do that yet. It's something that they would like to do. So I'll kind of show you what mine look like. So you can see what I use it for. So I go to my custom. And... So then I can just project this up for my students, and so it has my image, and then it has a question, and then they can answer it. And so they they do this in kid blog. The kids are on kid blog, and then they answer their prompt. Now what it looks like if you're going to do it on the writing end, you know, because there's a lot of ways you can have it one student of the day. They just click on write. They can also record audio. They can save it to the gallery. There's a lot of ways that you can share this. So they can just. Type and I believe when you get ready to save it, just pretend like I typed. I'm done. And when I go to save to gallery, yes, then this is where you might would have your different profiles. Choose your author. 
And so you can share it by email. You can save it to the camera roll. There's a lot of different things. I think if you do audio, that's when you save the video. So that one's right about it. There's also another one that's very similar. It's on my list. It's Tell About This. It's the exact same, except instead of writing, the kids talk. And that's a good one. Now, Book Creator, I'm going to show really, really quick, because that is the door prize, a free Book Creator. How, anyone here familiar with Book Creator? Good. Great app. So I definitely want to do this one. And then I'm going to let you guys go. I know it's dinner time. Close to. Book Creator allows you to make multi-media books. I'll pass this one because that's one I'm working on. Um, you can also share these. So we've done them with other people combining books. I don't know whether it's our. So this is one you can just put your picture in your um, text, you can do audio. I don't think it's going to want to do this here, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to show you what it looks like in iBooks because it'll run a little bit better. But you can include video, all sorts of cool stuff. So my iBooks really quick. People actually publish their students' books um, to the iBooks library so their students can actually be um, their own authors. So I actually pulled some that some kids did on their body parts. Amazing the things that these kids do. First, Elijah opens up the box to see all of the books. So they have a nice little audio. This is really nice for your reluctant writers, too, that they can do this. Nothing go through all the. So, video. You can draw, um, gosh, what can't you do? And it's a very easy interface. Add text, my wonderful drawing there. So that's book creator, so that's what you want. Any questions? I, I feel so bad because I didn't go through everything that I planned. I knew an hour, yesterday I kept going, take this out. This out. Take this out. So, if you have any questions, because I know you have a list of some things that are on, um, on the um, handout. Gosh, see, I hate being at the end of the day. My brain goes too. Um, definitely send me a question on Twitter. I'm Sarah24Lynn, and I'll be glad to answer those for you. I'll explain this, and if anyone would like to leave, that's fine. But this is a wonderful little gadget, because I know I was going to share gadgets. So here I am sharing the gadget. This is by IPO. And it is a iZiggy HD wireless camera that you can actually, if anyone wants to stay, I'll kind of go through a really quick demo because it is on. But it's wonderful because you can display things using this without being connected to anything. My next goal is the Apple TV, so I'm not tied to the projector. Let's see if I can pull this up really quickly if it's going to work. That's my human body. Oh, I've got to need to go to my settings first. Set my wireless. So it has its own little wireless base. I'm already connected. We'll see how long it takes. Hopefully not too long. You know, it's 159, but it includes, you know, it's got the camera built in and the wireless, and we'll see how long it takes for the wirelesses to connect. Sometimes it helps. Go out. And our wireless here has not been the greatest, so I don't know how long it will take. But what I like about it, if it'll come up, is you can antenate. See, I don't know what's going on with this. I tell you, I touch. My, I think it's this connector, the way it's connected. Nothing is happening. But it actually is a 
What is the full handout? It is on the handout. It is an IPBO HD, um, iZiggy, I think is what they call it. It's by IPBO. It should be on. I wonder if I close it out and come back in. I hate this when you want to do the search and your notifications come down. Now, I don't know why it's taking so long. I had it earlier when nobody was here, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's the really nice thing is, you know, I can come over here, you guys are working on some math, put it there, and then point out what you're doing. But for some reason, it is not wanting to connect here. Turn it off and turn it back in. It is, oh, I was going to put that back up. I'll show you where it is. I feel real. It's convoluted. Thank you. Well, thank I think you. We're all tired, but that was really yeah. good. I got it, great, you know, great apps that yeah. were really interesting. I hate to get the last session because I know everybody is like, "This is really cool." Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll turn it back on, and maybe I'll we'll get it working. I'm willing to kind of hang out if people are. I think it's. I think it works.